stadium rocks. In July, in Guatemala, a crazy crowd may have influenced a late non-call that led to the home team tying the game in the last seconds, wiping out a win for the U.S. Today in Washington, payback time. The Americans hope to ride the roar in the quest to qualify for World Cup 2002. Most important home game for the U.S. in three years. Guatemala comes to Washington, D.C. Two of the four nations in this World Cup qualifying group will advance to the next round. Costa Rica is expected to bombard Barbados today. If the U.S. beats Guatemala today, then beats Costa Rica in Columbus on the 11th of October, the U.S. will advance to the next round of World Cup qualifying, but it won't be easy. Alongside Ty Keo, I'm Jack Edwards. Guatemala is expected to pack it in defensively today. There are five different starters from the U.S. team that met Guatemala in July. Biggest difference at the front, Ty. There's more strength in the attack for the United States in this match up with Guatemala and you look at Brian McBride back from a broken cheekbone Joe Maxmore also back from injury McBride critical today because he's so dominant in the air and Joe Maxmore is always in the box ready to get on the end of any drop downs or balls played in there are changes not just up front but also in midfield we will detail the lineups they expect 52,000 in the house stay with us we're back in a flash versus Guatemala on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Budweiser. With the crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. This Bud's for you. Chevrolet, Chevy, will be there. And Texaco and Haviland, proud sponsors of U.S. Soccer and the 2000 U.S. Olympic team. The stadium literally is pulsing with the rhythm of Guatemalan and U.S. fans for this World Cup qualifier. Welcome to RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C., where we're about to go 45 minutes without interruption in the first half. Here are the lineups for today's game. Edgar Estrada being counted on hugely by the Guatemalans. Casey Keller back in the goal for the U.S. And for the USA at defense, number 23, Eddie Pope in his home stadium. Many times he'll be one of the only defenders back for the USA. John O'Brien in the defensive midfield for the USA, now a member of Ajax of Amsterdam. And up front, the guys that need to produce the goals, Joe Max Moore and Brian McBride. We talked about the changes in the U.S. lineup. You will see number 19 in white for the U.S. Jovan Karofsky today. Joe Max Moore and Brian McBride set to go as the U.S. attacks Guatemala left to right. The referee for today's match, Ulysses Rangel of Mexico. Now, Ty, all week long, Bruce Arena has said that he does not expect Guatemala to send too many men forward to the ball. He expects a very defensive posture, thinks that this team would be very happy to come out of RFK with a 0-0 tie, one point on the road in World Cup qualifying. Juan Carlos Plata disrupted in midfield by Burhalter, and there's Reyna serving it to McBride. It comes back to Burhalter. David Regi, who along with Tony Sane, has played every minute of U.S. World Cup qualifying this year, trying to get to Korea, Japan for 2002. This portion of the match is brought to you by Haviland. Here's Tony Sane, very dangerous in transition, ships it for Stewart. And this is Valencia settling. Benitez, the flick outside for Martin Machon of the Miami Fusion of MLS. Eddie Pope called for a hold in midfield. As we told you, Ron Hell in charge of this match. It is a Mexican officiating crew. John O'Brien settling it down. The U.S. without Chris Armas, who sustained a ligament injury in the Barbados game. Armas also getting knocked out of Olympic action because of that. Regi goes up to win a ball in the air. The U.S. emphasizing winning balls in the air today. Karofsky knocked down, and the U.S. will get a restart. When I spoke to Bruce Serena just before the game, he felt that restarts, free kicks, could be the difference in this match, and he also expects Guatemala to foul quite a bit to try and disrupt the flow and rhythm of the U.S. play. Regis chip into the box. McBride the target man. He and Pope pop it up. Pesarosi trying to clear, but Sane wins the ball. And the Guatemala is just clear. Perón got to get out to Plata. Ruano in midfield steps around O'Brien. 
Funes into the middle. Stewart heads it clear. The Guatemalans pressing the action. Great reaction from the U.S. fans here and also quite a few Guatemalan fans in the upper deck. Interesting so far that Guatemala is putting players into the attack. I think they're trying to bring their fans into this game early. Sean gives it up for Plata. Plata drilling it across the middle. Eddie Pope clears it out. The target man again is McBride at midfield, and he sells it nicely. Plays it square. Karofsky play on on the advantage after McBride is taken down. Karofsky nudges it for Regi. The back moving up on the left wing where there's room. Plays it back for O'Brien. O'Brien's cross into the box for McBride. Heads it down for Moore. It comes loose at the top of the yard. Valencia turning it back for Guatemala. Moore hustling all the way to midfield, attempts the slide tackle. Valencia keeps it in bounds, turns on Sané. Reyna wins the ball with a perfect tackle. Regi. Here's Greg Berhalter, who has been strong in central defense for the U.S. Regi with a lot of space. Funes, the defender number 10 in blue, coming over to have a look. Karofsky available on the sideline, gets it from Regi. Brings it back to Burhalter. The United States with a different and asymmetrical setup at midfield with O'Brien and Reyna as the defensive midfielders. Karofsky centrally right in front of them. That means there's space on that left side for David Regi to overlap. Sané in a tussle against Valencia. McBride taken down from behind. Hiron on the foul at the midfield stripe. The U.S. has the free kick. McBride stepped out of his shoes, so there will be a little delay as the U.S. wants its target man in the attack on this free kick. Bruce Arena told me he would like to see a lot of high balls into the box early. Tony Sané will be getting forward into the attack along the right side. Bruce Arena and Dave Sarakin. Arena the head coach. Sarakin the assistant. McBride going up for it, winning it for Karofsky. Karofsky got a hand on it. They say play on, it was incidental. Reyna wins the head ball. Sané pokes it toward the middle. Benitez juggles it around O'Brien beautifully. Five trap to bring it down. More juggling from Machon. Swisher up the sideline. Pope reaching around to win the ball from Pesarosi. Moore going directly for McBride. Miranda back on the clear. Reyna, the pop-up header. Benitez against O'Brien. O'Brien low bridging him and getting called for him. An early goal is what the United States is looking for. But we've seen a little bit of a surprise, I think, from Guatemala in that they've not dropped into a defensive shell. They've tried to get out and get players forward and play into the attack. John O'Brien just backing in to Benitez. Not challenging for the ball, playing the man. Benitez, tender, playing through a knee injury for his country. This portion of the match brought to you by Budweiser. Listen to the USA chants at RFK. Off Pope, Casey Keller stumbles. It's a corner kick for Guatemala. The U.S. not looking sharp. Keller back in the nets for the United States. Brad Friedel had played against Barbados two and a half weeks ago. Keller with Rayo Vallecano in Spain, helping them in UEFA qualifying. The U.S. has a nine-game unbeaten streak against Guatemala. But many of those games have been very tough. Six wins, three ties. Reyna winning it out of the air against Benitez's challenge. Stewart beating the ball in midfield. It deflects back, and Keller will control the box. Send it down to Rob Stone. Starting spot, a duel between Kobe Jones and Jovan Karofsky. Head coach Bruce Arena told me just before the kick, he went with Karofsky because he gives the team the best chance to have a third forward in the attack and because he's so dangerous in the air. That important today because the U.S. plans on flighting a ton of balls into the box. Here's Joe Max Moore creating something with hustle. Looking for McBride at the top of the six-yard box. It goes off of Jerome, out of bounds for a U.S. corner. There is a vibration in this stadium, figuratively and literally. Many Guatemalan fans, but the U.S. supporters very vocal. Reyna's corner and in-swinger to the near post. Estrada, unchallenged, grabs it and quickly distributes. Looking for Valencia out at midfield. 
Traps it away from O'Brien's pressure. Tries the nutmeg move, but the ball will roll out. And a hold called on John O'Brien. Joe Maxmore, number nine for the USA. Now the second all-time goal scorer in U.S. soccer history. Had an assist, in fact, last week for Everton. A 2-2 game with Darby. Reyna intercepts Miranda's pass. Here's Moore turning it for Karofsky. Looking forward. Reyna back to Moore. One-time pass. Tough chance. And it goes beyond Karofsky. Heron winning it down. Reyna volleying it up. Pesarosi, a big guy, takes it away from Reyna. He looks for Plata. Plata has time to turn. O'Brien chasing him down. 30-yard shot over the top. Keller quickly back into play. The U.S. looks to bring it up. It is very, very muggy here in Washington, D.C. The Guatemalans should feel right at home. Temperatures in the mid-80s. And the humidity is stifling. Stewart against Valencia. And Valencia knocks it out of bounds. U.S. gets the throw in. Tony Sané to take it. Karofsky is available. Settles it down. Looks for the corner for Sané. Valencia back toward the middle. Benitez can't head it clear. Reyna has it on his foot. Mario Reyna switching with Polk and dropping back. Now Berhalter. As Regi, a lot of space here. Karofsky showing straight ahead, gets the ball. Out of the wing to Moore. Stewart lurking near the top of the box. Sané also on the weak side. Long cross, too high for Stewart. Machon. Valencia. Perón. United States here looking to play high pressure, keep the ball in Guatemala's end of the field. They'll chase every ball as Guatemala tries to work it out of the back. This portion of the match brought to you by Budweiser. And a foul on the far side. And now, as we are in the 10th minute, we are seeing more and more of the pattern that was expected in this match with Guatemala dropping a lot of players back and fouling. Karofsky with a quick turn. Luano taking his legs out from under him, setting up another very dangerous chance when you consider Tony Sané at the back post, Eddie Pope centrally, Brian McBride in there as well. Pope's header, save Estrada! Regi uncontested. Eddie Pope would have loved to put this one away in front of his hometown crowd. Estrada reacting well despite having to see the ball through some traffic. Karofsky to Stewart, the flying volley goes wide. Stewart agonizing it, not putting it on the face of the goal, but the U.S. clearly taking the attack here. A look from behind the goal, the ball being played in. Good combination work at midfield by the United States. They switched the point of attack, dropping the ball in behind the left defender for Ernie Stewart's run. Guatemala looking for the counter, and Pope goes over the top to win a head ball. They actually drilled that very skill in practice frequently this week. Guatemala a little too stiff on the pass, and it comes out of bounds beyond Valencia. And it'll be a U.S. throw in. This portion of the match is brought to you by Chevrolet. Two of the four nations in this World Cup qualifying group will advance to the next round. There will be six nations in that following group. They will play home and home, 10 games apiece. And the top three of those six nations in the next round will advance to Korea, Japan for 2002 and play in that 32 team World Cup final. The wall pass goes out of bounds. Valencia again cannot save it. Programming reminder, tomorrow night, the Denver Broncos against the Super Bowl champion St. Louis Rams. It is the season premiere of Monday Night Football. Al Michaels, Dan Fouts, Dennis Miller, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ABC. Benitez at midfield, O'Brien harassing him. O'Brien takes Benitez down. It's a free kick for Guatemala. And again, Benitez has been injured. He has a nicked-up knee. 
He was out fouling Guatemala right now, 4-3. John O'Brien, part of his job today is to be a destroyer in midfield, disrupt Guatemala's attempt to counterattack. Regie with Benitez there defensively, waits, squirts it into the middle. Funes intercepts. Ruano trying to push it forward. Chips for Pesarosi. Pope has been very active defensively, reaching around frequently to win balls here in the first 13 minutes. O'Brien, Pope. Sané with O'Brien showing toward midfield, and this is Stewart up the line. Valencia pressuring Stewart. He has to come back with the Pope. Guatemala playing without two strong players due to yellow card trouble. Suspended Carlos Ruiz, who scored the tying goal against the United States on July 16th. And a defender, very solid defender, Gustavo Cabrera, also out due to yellow card. Reyna O'Brien settles, pops it into the box, looking for more. Miranda, the captain of Guatemala, clears it out. Reggie will try again. Reyna. Shipping for McBride over the top. Perone pop-up header. McBride contested. Comes out past the arc. Benitez has it bounce over his head. O'Brien can't control. Reyna steps up for Karofsky. Reyna's 35-yarder. Estrada makes the save. The ground very uneven in Estrada's end, and there will be some bad bounces today. Also, nasty footing down there. The goalie could go down. Pesarosi trying to settle in front of Pope, and Pope is just in his shirt. But this one comes off to Plata. Plata for Valencia, tries to tip it ahead for Pesarosi. Pope screening the ball, and Keller coming out to snatch it. Foul called against Pesarosi. Very aggressive. Guy's a moose. We saw him warming up before the game. He's trying to physically batter his way through both Eddie Pope and Casey Keller. Good communication there as Pope held off Pesarosi so that Keller could leap off of his line and get to the ball first. Pesarosi wearing number 14 in blue. A dangerous play on a high kick by Guatemala, and the Guatemalans, who are as alert as anyone, trying a quick restart. This is Julio Cesar Cortez. He is the head coach of this Guatemalan team. Estrada. Burhalter and Pesarosi comes off for Keller. Greg Burhalter turns and looks forward. Regie can carry it. A lot of the attack could come from the U.S. back line today. As the U.S. coaching staff is not anticipating a lot of forward pressure from Guatemala. You could see Regie and Sané moving aggressively forward as this game progresses. Berhalter. Regie with Karofsky showing square. That's Karofsky. He has O'Brien. Chips forward for Reyna. Tries to settle it. Reyna off to Karofsky. The shot save Estrada. He's had a couple of sparklers. This one a shot that surprised Estrada as Claudio Reyna set up Jovan Karofsky. Karofsky expecting it and cracking it first time. Sané looking up the line for Joe Max Moore, ridden off the play on Hiron's physical challenge. Oh, McBride forcing Estrada into the misplay. It'll be a goal kick for Guatemala. McBride and Moore really showing their hustle. Reina here combining well with Karofsky. Gets it from Karofsky, gets it straight back to him. A slight deflection, in fact, out in front, making it an even tougher stop for Estrada. This portion of the match is brought to you by Allstate. Pope wins another header in midfield. Now Reyna miscommunicates with O'Brien. The two Americans end up giving it up. Guano can't keep it in bounds far side. Regi looking for a target on the throw-in. Bruce Arena, the U.S. coach. When the U.S. scores first in the arena tenure, it is 13 wins, just one loss, and two ties. One of those two ties was against Guatemala. David Regine to the chance of USA. Reyna. Can't beat his man in midfield. Here's Benitez. 
O'Brien on the slide tackle to win it back, but it bounces right to Benitez. Wata, who is a forward, but dropping back here. Benitez taking the layoff pass, looking for Plata right side. Plata has Pesarosi looked offside. They're going to let it go. Cross into the box, and Pope wins it to head it clear, far side. Valencia settling. He's got Pesarosa. He is target man. Goes over the top. Pope deflects it, and it goes out of bounds. It's a corner kick, a dangerous situation. The U.S. has had a couple of miscues, a little bit of miscommunication in the back third of the field. Very nearly an own goal off of the head of Eddie Pope. He's contesting for every ball. He knows it's critical that he win any high balls. There's Guatemala surprising a lot of people here, risking more players forward, trying to steal a goal here against the United States in the United States' national capital. Michonne's corner is a low one, not well taken, and Regi blasted clear to midfield. Chiron. Valencia, who right now is serving as the sweeper as Miranda had gone all the way up as a target man. U.S. calling for an offside, not getting a call. Keller goes up. Hard challenge as Plata goes in high. Keller will fire it for Sané, who's 20 yards of space here to settle it. Now Pesarosi on the late challenge. Sané fending him off, screening the ball, dropping it off for Pope. As O'Brien. O'Brien with Plata on his back. Chips it forward looking for Reyna. Reyna settles. He's got more in the middle. Reyna the shot save. Estrada rebound comes out. Heron heading it. Stewart settles. Benitez the challenge. Stewart back on the side. It's Sonny for Polk. Karofsky at the top of the penalty arc. Regis 35 yarder. Goes off Plata. Regis. Dropping it back for Burhalter. Plata having a look defensively. O'Brien turns it. In case we don't get anything else, that long shot. O'Brien into the middle. McBride taken down from behind. The yellow card is coming out of the pocket in the 20th minute. That is on Caron, I believe, and if that is the case, he will miss Guatemala's next match. He already has picked up one yellow card. Two yellow cards in a round of World Cup qualifying. You must sit out the next game. Ryan McBride taking up a position near the edge of the box. Contact on the back of his ankle, a challenge from behind by Hiron. Now this is Joe Max Moore territory for a ball bent over the top of the wall. Karofsky and Moore. Moore takes it, trying the hook. Couldn't get it up over the top and then back down. This portion of the match is brought to you by Motrin. Edgar Estrada has had a busy afternoon already. The U.S. has given up a couple of counterattack opportunities for Guatemala, but clearly has pressed the attack. Regi pops it out of the air, looking for more too hard for him. And the sweeper, Miranda, clearing. Karofsky knocked down, play on as Ruano wins the ball for Funes. Funes back to Ruano, trying to outrun O'Brien around the right side. Regi comes over in defensive support and belts it into the stands over by Sam's Army, the crew that follows this U.S. team all over the world. They send it to Rob Stone. Nearly moot by the noise of this crowd. Guys, I'm all of six feet from head coach Bruce Arena. I have to strain to hear what he's saying. One tip U.S. assistant head coach Dave Sarakin gave me before the kickoff. Look for a lot of back post stuff in this game. Joe Max Moore, a great near post target. And Brian McBride, so deadly on the far post. McBride tracking the attack. Valencia over to Heron. Some nice work. On short passes by Guatemala, Pesarosi the target man against Regi. Regi heads it up and over, and it's out of bounds for another Guatemala corner kick. Well, the United States playing under pressure here. They're playing at home, but this is a pivotal game in terms of the standings in this group of World Cup qualifying. And as Guatemala does have a few chances here, they've put players forward. The crowd in this upper deck wearing the blue and white for Guatemala has gotten into the match and unsettled the United States a bit. 
Marchand from the Miami Fusion and Major League Soccer. McBride diving to head it clear. This is Funes, the captain for Guatemala. Into the box, Pesarosi. Pope stumbling. Pesarosi tracks it down. Pope back on his feet. Pesarosi, the target man. Swisher into the middle. Plata's shot deflected, and Keller scoops it up. Keller under some pressure. Guatemala on that last ball into the box with four blue shirts in the penalty area out in front of Casey Keller. So they are committed players to the attack. Corner kick is a perfect opportunity for Guatemala to go for that kind of a strike. It's a rather safe chance, not in the flow of play. Karofsky approaching the box, makes the move through. Valencia belts it out. Regi square for O'Brien. Back for Pope, who has Sané on the right side. Comes short for Reyna. Moving against Benitez. They change the point of attack. Hard across the Regi, settles it. He has Karofsky going corner into the middle for Moore. Trying the diving volley attempt. Caron offering the physical opposition. Joe Max Moore absolutely fearless. Going after this driven ball into Guatemala's penalty area. David Regi had gotten the ball from Reyna on a good change of the point of the attack, and Joe Max Moore launched his body airborne trying to connect with that one. Alongside Ty Keown with Rob Stone down below getting deafened on the sidelines, I'm Jack Edwards at a rocking RFK stadium. This is the U.S. against Guatemala in a World Cup qualifying match. 0-0 zero, zero as we play in the 24th minute. Guarantee we're not going to have a commercial break for at least another 21 minutes, so we hope you stay with us. Pope into the middle. Joe Max Moore turns. 25 yards from goal. His drive just goes over the top. Joe Max spinning and pumping one in. This portion of the match is brought to you by Hershey's Milk Chocolate. Joe Max Moore ever dangerous. Whirling here outside the box. About a 26, 27 yard shot just over the bar. Estrada trying to get his body up as high as he could. You can see Joe Max Moore equally dangerous with either foot. Reyna has McBride square left and Karofsky also going forward. It bounces off a couple of bodies and comes right to Funes. Luano, hard challenge from Regi. Luano is down and rolling around and Regi is going to get the yellow card in the 25th minute. The only U.S. player who is dressed for this game who is in danger of a suspension from a yellow card today would be Ernie Stewart. Of course, David Ray G would be in trouble with another yellow today after coming in studs up, leaving his feet to challenge for the ball. Miranda for Pesarosi, who has been a very good target man for Guatemala in the early going. Machon belts it off an American. It's going to be a Guatemala throw in about 20 yards from the end line. Valencia. Machon in traffic. Stewart picks his pocket. Here's the counterattack with Moore going away from the ball and getting it in space. Moore is nifty around one man. Tries to go right wing for McBride. Guatemalan players down holding his face. It's Benitez. They're going to let it go. Advantage to the U.S. Berhalter, a literal step over move. Karofsky going corner against Rowano. The cross, Miranda popping it sky high. More the challenge, half volleys back to O'Brien. More hustling and creating stuff with nothing more than just a work attitude. Guatemala looks to counter. Pesarosi can't settle. Burhalter on his back. Hope ships for Regi. 0-0 U.S. and Guatemala in a World Cup qualifier. First half at RFK Stadium. All tickets were sold, and at this point, almost every seat is filled. Ashon outside of the foot pump ahead for Pesarosi. Burhalter the foul on the challenge. The stands are literally jumping. 
U.S. fans making the building move at RFK Stadium. Now the defense needs to give them something to cheer about. Michon coming left side for Hiron. Hiron misplays it out of bounds. Regional college football action coming up on Saturday on ABC. Miami against Washington in some regions. Oregon against Wisconsin. Missouri at Clemson. It's Saturday, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 p.m. Pacific on ABC. Play getting ugly here at midfield. Both team trying to exert dominance in that critical part of the field. Sané against Marshall. Oh. Look at how little pressure there is on the U.S. side of the field. The defense packed back for Guatemala, hoping Estrada can keep it at 0-0. O'Brien seeing Regis overlap run into huge space, left wing corner. Good place for a cross. Cuts it back against the grain. It goes over the top of Stewart on Valencia's Nick header. Oh, dumps it down. Valencia all the way up in the counterattack. It's a three on four. Now four on four for Guatemala. As Funes joins the attack against Pope. Back into the middle. Plata takes a dive. Get up, says the referee Ron Hell. Regine. Karofsky has some space. Benitez there defensively. This is Joe Max Moore. Makes the move on Benitez. Still screens the ball. Reyna for O'Brien. O'Brien moving over against Machon. Runs into Benitez. Gives it away. Swisher stepping forward. Plata looking long for Valencia, but Pope again gets a piece of the ball, and a good thing he did. This portion of the match is brought to you by Haviland. Number 19, Valencia, hanging out on this left sideline, looking to sneak up on the counterattacks. Because Plata has dropped into the midfield. He was listed as a forward with Pesarosi. Here is Pesarosi against Sané. Sané touches it. It's going to be a corner kick again for Guatemala. And again, we'll anticipate that Miranda and Swisher will move forward and try to become target men on this corner as Casey Keller, through the din, tries to communicate with his defenders. Manuel Funes, the captain for Guatemala. The in-swinger to the near post again. McBride is there. He's had two clears on corner kicks. Michonne settling away from Joe Max Moore. Funes hustling toward the corner against McBride. The slide tackle by McBride. It's going to go out for a throw-in. Well done by Brian McBride. When you see your forwards tracking back like Brian McBride, like Joe Max Moore, it's an inspiration to the rest of the team. Also an inspiration, Brian McBride coming back two different times from broken cheekbones and still playing with complete abandon. Rowano's long throw in going for the near post for Pesarosi bounces all the way through to the penalty spot. Karofsky can't clear, but he ties his volley, goes well wide to the left. This is something that you absolutely do not want to see a ball bouncing in your penalty area. United States, just a little bit disorganized, a little bit, I think, surprised that Guatemala has attacked as much as they have. Feel a little bit of self-confidence growing on the Guatemalan side right now as it begins to shift some momentum. The U.S. had many chances early, but the Guatemalans withstood them, getting a couple of great saves from goalie Edgar Estrada. Stewart on a takedown, and that's going to cost Ernie Stewart the game in Columbus on the 11th of October. He's carrying a yellow card into this game, and he picks up a caution here in the 32nd minute. Ernie Stewart getting caught up in the heat of battle here. No chance for the ball really trailing the play and hooking Plata's ankle. The United States needs to play a little more patience. That was unnecessary for him to take a yellow card at that part of the field at this stage of the game. You see Ernie Stewart's disgust at the call. But at this juncture, Ty, the U.S. has to put this moment behind it, mark up defensively, pay attention to the moment at hand. McBride tracking it down far sidelines. Miranda on the challenge. They've caught the sweeper upfield if they can counter quickly. 
Berhalter slowing it down. Now here comes the deliberate U.S. attack, and Guatemala has all 11 men behind the ball. Very little pressure forward. The injured player Plata has returned to the field with the referee's permission. Reyna shipping left side. Karaski taking it down against Juano, looking far post for Stewart. Valencia heads it up and out over the line. Corner kicks now 4-2 in favor of Guatemala. Ernie Stewart looks to be channeling that energy positively. You often see athletes get off the track mentally with anger, but Stewart has an agenda. John O'Brien's corner kick for the near post deflected. O'Brien on the throw in as Reyna. Back to O'Brien, Michonne there defensively. Reyna has room for the cross. Slices it to the far post, goes over Burhalter. It squirts along toward the corner. It'll bounce out for Guatemala throw in. Interesting to see here what the U.S. will do. This ball deep in the corner for Guatemala. The United States will press high pressure and try and hem that ball into the Guatemalan end. This portion of the match is brought to you by Budweiser. Pesarosi screening nicely. He has played well for Guatemala. This front man who has some size to challenge the physical Americans. Oh, half volleying it back into the box. Estrada has it. Pesarosi and all of the subs for Guatemala made a huge difference in the second half of that first qualifier down in Guatemala on July 16th. Valencia tries to sell the dummy and Pope is not buying. Reyna for Burhalter who is hiding behind Ron Hell, the referee. O'Brien looking for Stewart. He's offside. Rob Stone on the sideline. What have you got? Bruce Arena says Brian McBride is critical to the U.S.'s chance for success, so we are tracking him this afternoon with our sideline sightings. Headers one. We know he's going to get a lot of balls flighted to him. Four. He's suffered two fouls. He's been on the turf a lot more than that, guys. But those numbers were mainly in the first 15 minutes of this game. His jersey is stuck to him. He is absolutely drenched in sweat, an indication of the effort the U.S. has made here in the first 35 minutes. If you remember back to July, the U.S. spent itself in the first 60 minutes of the match and was flat-footed in the last 30. The Guatemalans can play a long time in the heat and humidity. Reyna in the corner going one on two, gets off the cross. Swisher belting it high and clear. Plata the flick header, but he gives it away to Berhalter. Plata is down. Play continues. Now Sané in sporting fashion turns and belts it across the sideline to get a stoppage of play. A programming reminder that tonight on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports kicks off its third full season of NFL coverage. It's the Tennessee Titans against the Buffalo Bills. Coverage begins 7.30 p.m. Eastern time with NFL primetime. ESPN and ABC, your exclusive home for primetime NFL football. Sportsmanship there. Ball returned to the United States. Of course, pretty deep in their own end after the injury. Karofsky, who is pushing up on the left wing frequently, gets his pocket picked. Guano getting back defensively. Berhalter knocks it free. Too far ahead for Regi. Funes with Karofsky tracking him. You see players slipping down. The turf is very, very hard here. and The cleats do not sink in well. On Benny top, though, it's a bit slick. There was about 20 minutes of rain about 10 o'clock this morning. The grass itself is dry, but the dirt is damp for sure. Funes and Regi belting one another. Play on. It squirts to Funes, the chip for Pesarosi against Berhalter. Misplays the ball, it's a goal kick. Good defensive patience there by Greg Berhalter to not bother making contact with the, the monster Pesarosi. That guy is a physical presence, banging bodies around, and making things difficult for the United States at the back. Julio Cesar Cortez is pulling the trigger on the first of his three allotted substitutions. Plata, who went down heavily just a moment ago, is coming out of the game, and Mario Acevedo goes up front. Acevedo, another big guy. Another player who made a big impact coming off the bench in the second half for Guatemala in the match in Mazatenango. He was the player dribbling when Frankie Hayduck made the controversial slide, which in my opinion set up the penalty kick call later on Greg Berhalter. 
Regi, Karofsky. Regi, the little pop up. Burhalter settles it on the thigh. O'Brien for Regi. Burhalter with no pressure. Now Pope looking around. It's there for Regi. He takes the space. Funes coming over to have a look. Toward the top of the box. Ruano knocking it clear, getting it back from Funes. Gives it away to Karofsky. Karofsky turns. He's got Reina 35 yards from goal. Reina tries the chip pass one on three. There are a lot of trees in the forest and it's seldom that a bullet will get from one side clear through to the other. Pope against Pesarosi. What a physical confrontation. Pesarosi dives over the top and grabs the ball. Finally gets called for the push. The U.S. restart. What do you need to see from the U.S. attack here, Ty? The U.S. had it its way in the first 15 minutes, but hasn't for the last few. Part of it is establishing a rhythm, which they've not managed to do. Through the midfield, the Guatemalans have packed it in very tightly. We saw earlier John O'Brien at one point looking for options, didn't see any. He ended up dribbling into four blue shirts. And that's not just his fault. It's the fault of other players not giving him good enough options. The available players for passes have to show for the ball. They have to come back to the ball. This portion of the match brought to you by Tropicana. Tony Sané as the U.S. in white faces Guatemala in blue. World Cup qualifier. The next U.S. home game is the 11th of October in Columbus against Costa Rica. Costa Rica and the U.S. the favorites to advance from this four-nation group to the next round of qualifying. Bicycle clear Valencia. Berhalter. Everybody back for Guatemala. Bunker defense. O'Brien with room to move. One on three. Now chips right wing. Stewart leaps up to make a beautiful trap. Sané cracks it far post. He's got Karofsky in space. Karofsky at the corner of the box against Ruano. Chips back across the grain. Heron, the header clear. The U.S. seems to be one pass from getting that great shot that Joe Max Moore had a couple of times in the early going. Karofsky threatened it for one point from long range. Sané against Valencia. Off Sané. Guatemala has the throwing. Joe Max Moore exhorting his teammates, clapping his hands. He's the man in the middle of the screen in white, saying, come on, this team's got to hustle. We've got to put in the effort right here. Well, no question, one of the aims of the Guatemala team coming in here strategically, tactically, is to keep the score 0-0 as long as possible. It's a moral victory for them to walk into locker room here at halftime with the score still tied. Berhalter winning the ball in front of Acevedo, but then gives it away to Benitez. Now Ruano walks the ball at midfield. Little pressure here as the U.S. begins to suffer a little in the heat. Acevedo is onside as Sané was back. Walks in short post. Berhalter recovers and knocks it out for another Guatemala corner kick. The United States living on that knife edge, playing the offside trap. We look on the replay. Acevedo was not offside. We'll have a look. Makes his run. The ball's already played. And he's still even with Eddie Pope. Machon has been ineffective on his corner kicks. Many falling short of the near post. And again, he drills it in low. And McBride is there on the challenge. Machon tries it again. This one loops all the way to the far side of the box. Pesarosi volleys it back. Funes trying to settle. Check it. It's Benitez. Benitez trying to get away from Karofsky. He runs into his own man, Funes. Here's a counterattack for the U.S., but it's three on six as Guatemala's back in big numbers. McBride has a ton of space. Ruano and now Benitez there defensively changes the point of attack to Reina. Reina has more on the far side. Also, Karofsky waving for the ball quickly. Acevedo, fresh legs, takes it away from Reina. Funes, the captain. Guatemalans cheer at RFK. Caron. Chip pass for Pesarosi with Berhalter wrapping him up. Machon. Acevedo. Valencia. Funes trying to turn on Pope. Pope steps in. Great tackle. Takes the ball away. Gives it off to Porowski. McBride wants to move it up fast. Very few U.S. players running into the attack on transition here. Now here comes Sané. Right side. Big numbers for the U.S. Moore's available left side. Through ball intended for Stewart. Stewart still has it, turns it toward the middle. Swisher takes it away and wraps it clear. Pope has a bad bounce, handles the ball nicely. Sané has McBride on the far post, looking for him all the way across the penalty area. 
McBride chest traps it down, volleys it back for more, tries the header, can't get it off. Miranda there defensively. Funes, Pesarosi tries the wall pass for Acevedo, falls down, O'Brien on the challenge. Regi can't make a clean volley, O'Brien saves him in front of Funes. The United States attack perhaps getting a bit too predictable with early balls into the box from the flanks. They need to mix it up a little bit more with some central combinations. They also need to maybe do some dribbling towards the near towards near the top of the penalty area of Guatemala to draw a foul or two to give Joe Max Moore or Jovan Karofsky some other attempts on goal from free kicks. It was about at this juncture in the game in Guatemala in July that Ante Razov scored to give the U.S. a 1-0 lead into the dressing room. O'Brien, a long cross, Estrada picks it off. A reminder that coming up in the All-State Halftime Report, we will take a look at the juggled Olympic roster. We will also have first-half analysis and highlights as this stadium is vibrating in Washington, D.C. Reyna looking right side for the fleet. Stewart. Stewart will track this one down, crosses it. It comes off of her own out-of-bounds U.S. corner kick. The U.S. Well, beginning to exploit the speed on the flanks. And Hiron saving a goal there. Hiron playing because Cabrera's out on yellow cards. Ernie Stewart, a wonderful ball cut back towards a near post run. McBride was making the perfect run. We'll have a look at it here. The ball played over the top. Ernie Stewart, a well-angled run, well-timed, no offside. Look at this ball. It's going for McBride right at the top of the six-yard box. Hiron stops a goal. 44th minute, the short corner. Moore. O'Brien, far post. McBride's header just goes wide. Goal kick. That's what the U.S. wants. Awesome. Breathtaking. Brian McBride airborne and hanging over the top of the entire Guatemalan defense. We'll have a look at it from behind the goal. The in-swinger coming from John O'Brien. Look at him get over the top of Hiron. The defender marking him. Estrada gets stranded off of his line. He would have had no chance with this ball had McBride been able to direct it inside that far post. One of the hidden benefits of the broken cheekbone was that Brian McBride went to the weight room an awful lot. He said he didn't put on a lot of weight, but he did add significant strength. And you can tell when he goes up for a head ball like that, the ab strength, the strength through the chest and shoulders, how much leverage he's able to develop without any contact with the ground. There will be one minute of time added to the first half at the official's discretion. Guatemala has shown a lot more offense than we expected. Here's the U.S. with a chance for a late break. Regi unopposed on the left side. Ships it for more. Flick on for Karofsky, trying to get through the seam. Here is McBride across the top of the box. McBride goes for the shot. He had Stewart in a pasture on the right side, but didn't see him. Tony Sané. As we are in stoppage time, only about a half a minute left in the first half. Stewart trying to work against Hiron. Good tackle by Hiron. Stewart tries to win it back. It comes off Pesarosi. Tricky move by Regi. He's into the box. Regi goes to the corner. Right on the line of the penalty area. And they rule a goal kick. No foul. The Guatemala's claiming it was a dive and wanting Regi to get a second yellow. I, I hardly think that that will happen. For a dive, he may have dramatized the contact a bit too much, but it was an intelligent play from the start in that he's taking on defenders one-on-one -on -one with a lot of space out on that left side and hoping either to get a dangerous cross in or draw a foul. U.S. head coach Bruce Arena believed that Guatemala was coming to RFK Stadium intent upon a 0-0 tie. And the Guatemalans are halfway there. Brian McBride with a lot of intensity in the attack. But the Guatemalans bringing on fresh legs and holding off the U.S., at least for now. David Regi has been so dangerous down the left side on a few occasions. This time here, just a slight bit of contact on the inside of his left foot, but it appeared he was, had already decided to go down before he was actually tackled. When we return to rollicking RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C., Rob Stone will join us for the All-State Halftime Report. This is a World Cup qualifying match, the U.S. against Guatemala in our nation's capital on this Labor Day weekend.
Why are there so many precious kisses in every bag? Because they go really fast. Little Hershey's Kisses, big chocolate taste. What's this stuff? Some cereal. It's supposed to be good for you. Did you try it? I'm not going to try it. You try it. I'm not going to try it. Let's get Mikey. Yeah. He won't need it. He hates everything. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. After all these years, life is still the good for you cereal that kids think is just plain good. Change your body. Gold's gym. This is fun. And I was thinking maybe we could go back to my place and watch a movie. Sure. See you there. No. Chevy Cavalier, so dependable. There are more of them out there working than any other small car. Bad, everyone doesn't have a car they can depend on. Cavalier, we'll be there. You worry about your car lasting? Imagine going 500 miles in one stretch at 200 miles an hour. That can zap the life right out of your car. That's why my team has always used Havlin Motor Oil, the same unique formulation you can get for your car. Is that the kind of protection I'm talking about? You guys Buy 12 quarts of Havilland motor oil and get a free U.S. soccer cap. Hurry, it's a kick. Only from Havilland. Sports live coverage of this World Cup qualifier between the U.S. and Guatemala resumes from D.C. Welcome back. This is your All-State Halftime Report. I'm Rob Stone. In just 10 days, the U.S. men's Olympic team begins their quest for an Olympic medal as they take on the Czech Republic, but they'll have to do it without the services of Chris Armas, who suffered a grade two knee sprain on this play August 16th in the U.S.'s victory over Barbados. The ripple effect of that injury has keeper Brad Friedel being named as one of the three overage players to that roster. He's in because normal Olympic starting goalkeeper Aiden Brown also will miss the Sydney games due to injury. Los Angeles Galaxy rookie midfielder Sasha Victorine has been added to fill out the 18-player roster. Tomorrow night on ABC Sports, it's the 2000 regular season debut of Monday Night Football. Terrell Davis is back with the Broncos. He'll be facing Kurt Warner, Marshall Falk, and the rest of the defending Super Bowl champs from St. Louis. Join Al, Dennis, and Dan, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. And we'll be back with other U.S. soccer news after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Allstate joins every sports fan in America in cheering the team that has beaten the world at its own game. This year, they know we're coming. Wanted one person to watch televised sports all day. Job includes playing video games and receiving massages. Salary 100 to $150,000. There are more of them out there working than any other small car. Okay, come on, who's your dad? Cavalier, we'll be there. Kart's hottest drivers are in a close battle for the series championship. Who will break from the pack at the Vancouver Molson Indy? Next on ABC. 
There's these two guys, Pete and Berg, and this girl, Sharon. They're all best friends, uh, sometimes. Sharon just married this guy, Johnny. Uh, Berg is an intern, and Pete just became a fireman. Oh, and there's this girl, Ashley, who used to go out with Berg, but now she goes out with a shortstop for the Red Sox. Two guys and a girl. They used to be on Wednesday, but now they're moving to Friday on ABC. I read in our St. Cloud Times that uh, Mark Dayton was sponsoring this trip. Been married to my wife for 51 years. I went up there just to get her medicine. She has uh, five or six prescription pills, which is costing dear, dear money. I saved $482. Boy, Mark took care of us. My Lord, all these other people, they've been sitting on their duffs. At least he's doing something. He can be well assured I'm going to vote for him. <laughs> It's week one of the NFL regular season, and sports wrap is in mid-season form. Heck, we're ready for the playoffs. Join me, Eric Gisselson, and Kathy Gerhardt, Sunday night at 1035. Who do you want to hear from after the Vikings game against the Bears? Who else? Dante Culpepper makes his first regular season start. He'll be here Sunday night. His mom might be, too. Plus, the dean of sports writers in the Twin Cities, the one and only Sid Hartman. We'll see you Sunday night, 1035, for the one and only Wrap. Football season's in full swing, and Channel 5's got you covered. Monday on Vikings Live, your local Dodge dealers bring you the first big show of the regular season. We'll go inside Minnesota's season opener against Chicago. Plus, he's the man in the middle of the Vikings defense. Kylie Wong will be in the house. Don't miss Vikings Live, Monday at 6.30. Then, it's Monday Night Football time. Watch the Broncos go head-to-head -head with the Rams. You want game? Channel 5's got it. You're stuck in the office, so what's the weather doing outside? Channel 5's new neighborhood weather bug keeps you in touch when you're at work or at home. It sits at the bottom of your computer screen. Click it. Instantly, you can access neighborhood weather stations all over the Twin Cities, even in your own community. Plus, neighborhood weather bug lets you know when severe weather is approaching. Just log on to KSTP.com to download your free weather bug. Channel 5 Eyewitness News and neighborhood weather bug. It's close to home. Technology, insight, and experience. That's Weather Center 5. Welcome back to RFK Stadium and ABC's live coverage of this World Cup qualifier between the U.S. and Guatemala. This year, all state halftime report. So, how did the U.S. get here? And where do they stand as World Cup qualification continues? Again, World Cup 2002 kicks off in less than two years. The states began their semifinal CONCACAF qualifying round in Mazatenango, Guatemala. And they had a 1-0 lead until the very late stages of this contest. Guatemala would put one on the board extremely, extremely late in the heat and jungle conditions of Guatemala. And they would end up tying this game at once. The U.S., though, did earn a crucial road point. Exactly seven days later, the U.S. traveled to Costa Rica. A controversial late penalty kick called. Greg Berhalter whistled for a handball. The Tico Ticos convert the PK, and they also get the victory. So the U.S. finally returns to home soil. A few weeks back in New England, Joe Max Moore back in the starting lineup. This one of his two goals as they just routed Barbados. Seven love. Group E qualification action underway this afternoon in San Jose, Costa Rica, and the Tico Ticos with a 2-0 lead over Barbados late stages of the second half. So how did the standings look from the three groups in CONCACAF qualifying? Well, here you go. Trinidad and Tobago and Mexico all but assured of qualifying from Group C. Remember, the top two teams from each of these three groups advance to the final CONCACAF qualifying bracket, where the top three teams from there will advance to World Cup 2002. Up next for the U.S., a home date in Columbus, Ohio, live on ESPN October 11th versus Costa Rica, 8 p.m. Eastern, and then they're at Barbados November 15th. Jack and Ty will be back after the break with highlights from the first half when the All-State Halftime Report continues. Good morning, Mr. Clark. Good morning, Tommy. Good morning, Mr. Clark. Good morning, Tommy. Good morning, Mr. Clark. Good morning, Tommy. Amazing. That car never ages. To help keep your car young, protect your engine with Haviland Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. Buy 12 quarts of Haviland Motor Oil and get free U.S. soccer cap. Hurry, it's a kick. Only from Haviland. How U.S. gymnast Vanessa Atler eats a Reese's peanut butter cup. 
There's no wrong way to eat a Reese's. So, I hope you like lobster. Mm. Everything all right? Fine. Allstate joins every sports fan in America in cheering the team that has beaten the world at its own game. This year, they know we're coming. <laughs> You've been working hard all day, and now it's time to kick back and reach for a cool one. <sighs> York Peppermint Patty. Get the sensation. At RFK Stadium in our nation's capital, the United States in this World Cup qualifying match against Guatemala. In a tough tussle, 0-0 at halftime. Claudio Reyna creating perhaps the best offensive opportunity. But Edgar Estrada has bricked up the front of his goal for Guatemala. The second half about to be getting more than 50,000 here at RFK. This has been the Allstate Halftime Report on ABC. This was fun. And I was thinking maybe we could go back to my place and watch a movie. Sure. See you there. Chevy Cavalier, so dependable, there are more of them out there working than any other small car. Too bad everyone doesn't have a car they can depend on. Cavalier, we'll be there. When it's you against a migraine headache, you can't play nice. But now, there's new Motrin Migraine Pain. It gives you the speed and power you need to show your migraine headache who's boss. New Motrin Migraine Pain Caplets. For people who don't fool around with pain. joins every sports fan in America in cheering the team that has beaten the world at its own game. This year, they know we're coming. Change your body. Gold's Gym. Just go over and ask her. I can't. Yes, you can. Come on. Dun 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 dun. Da 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 World Cup qualifying, United States versus Guatemala on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Tropicana, makers of Tropicana Seasons Best and Tropicana Pure Premium. Hershey Bar, put a smile on your face. And Budweiser, with the crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. This Bud's for you. This is the scene at RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. 
More than 50,000 soccer fans have poured in here cheering on the United States and Guatemala in this World Cup qualifying match. The team's a little slow in returning to the hot, humid field. And you hear the roar of the crowd rising up as the U.S. appears out of the tunnel. First half stats, Ty Keogh had looked good on the stat sheet for the U.S., but a couple of defensive miscues made it look shaky at times in the back third. Well, not only that, if you look at corner kicks, you see that Guatemala was effective at times in unbalancing the U.S. defense and creating some problems and moments of indecision out in front of Casey Keller. It appears that Ernie Stewart will start the second half despite picking up a yellow card in the first half. Of course, if he gets another yellow card, the U.S. goes... 10 against 11 for the rest of this game. Guatemala will have the ball to begin the second half. Wearing the blue, going left to right, you see. Just left of center of your screen, the match referee, Ulysses Ronhel of Mexico. Acevedo putting the ball into play to Benitez. Immediate challenge from Joe Max Moore, who, as usual, has been a motor today. Ruano turns and fires it. Regi takes it unopposed. Regi pushing forward, looking for McBride. Lays it off for Joe Max Moore. A little bit too far for him. Cabron running onto it. No substitutions, in fact, on either side as we begin the second half. Only one substitution in the game. Acevedo, number 18 in blue, going in for Guatemala. For Plata, another miscue by the U.S. And Keller playing it out of bounds, but that is after a whistle for a pushing foul against Guatemala. So the U.S. will get a restart. That's not a corner. Sané racing up the flank unopposed. This is what Bruce Arena wanted to see from his flank men. Stewart turns it beautifully, looks across the middle. McBride on the far post, but Estrada is there first. Estrada the quick counter, looking for Pesarosi. Berhalter leaning down to win the ball in front. This portion of the match is brought to you by Haviland. Reyna playing it up for Karofsky, getting it back. Jack, the second time, at least, the second time we've seen Casey Keller have trouble with his footing in this game. Regi, O'Brien looking far side. More on the challenge, Estrada brings it down. Rob Stone with halftime adjustments, Rob. No subs yet, guys, but four offensive-minded players are warming up. Tab Ramos, Kobe Jones, Eddie Lewis, and Ante Razov spoke with the head coaching staff. Said, guys need to be a little bit more patient, switch the play, do a better job on second balls, and they need to be more alert with Valencia, number 19 up front for Guatemala. Second balls, the rebounds, the extra chances, the stuff that McBride often creates for Joe Max Moore. Technically, they're called knockdowns. The high ball into the box, McBride excels at knocking the ball down into traffic where Joe Max Moore can pounce on it. O'Brien with a nifty move, gives it to Karofsky in traffic wall pass from McBride to Moore. McBride goes far post, it's a through pass intended for Karofsky, he's onside. Karofsky's crossed to the far post, Stewart racing in. Moore has the rebound out top. Reyna moving against Benitez. Karofsky has three target men in the middle. Chipping for Moore. Goes up, gets the challenge off McBride's chest. Machon clearing it to the sideline. Regi against Funes. Karofsky trying to turn one on three. Reyna. Regi has to step forward, takes on the challenge. Back to Reyna against Benitez. Steps by Benitez. Reyna, nifty move. Now with space, it's Regi across. Too far for Sané, who has sneaked up from the back line. It rolls out of bounds. But the U.S. beginning to play short combinations well. They're varying their attack. On two occasions, Regi had a chance to send another high ball into the box. Instead, he played the ball on the ground. Reyna, what a magical display of his prowess and confidence on the dribble to keep the ball, hold it, ride off several challenges, and still play a great ball into the corner. Machon into the middle for Acevedo, broken up. U.S. contesting every ball here as we open the second half. O'Brien winning it down. Reyna taking it away from Benitez. He's got Karofsky left. Reyna on the long run into the box. Still with it. Swisher pokes it away. Ruano. Funes can turn. Funes looking long right side. Pesarosi. Berhalter up over the top to win the head ball. Knocking it out of bounds. And that gives the U.S. defense a chance to recover here. In this qualifying group, a final is in. In the Costa Rica-Barbados game, Costa Rica with a 3-0 win. 
The U.S. of course beat Barbados 7-0 two and a half weeks ago. So Costa Rica stays atop this four nation group standings. The top two will advance to the next round of qualifying. Ruano has a long throw for Guatemala. He's 25 yards up the sideline. There's a short Funes right back to Ruano. Immediate challenge from O'Brien. Funes through Ruano. Regi defending. Tries for the corner kick and Regi blocks it toward the sideline. It'll be a throw. Jack, these two teams in an absolute death grip for that second spot to get into the next round of qualifying. Costa Rica looks to have pretty much locked up the number one slot. Ruano's throw in. Pesarosi across the middle. The half volley. Acevedo goes over the top. Bruce Arena has worked time and again with this squad this week on restarts just like that. That's what he did not want to see. Well, and again, we're seeing a ball bouncing in the U.S. box directly in front of Casey Keller's goal. And it's got to be cleaned up better and sooner. The long throw here, it does deflect off of Pesarosi. He's been a handful in there. He's a wide body. He's been able to muscle his way into positions to create very dangerous problems like we saw just there. Reyna chipping it forward. Sané all the way up on the wing, trying the cross, gets it into the box. Joe Max Moore hustling to keep it alive. Here's Karofsky trying to move toward the top of the arc. Comes square long for Regi. Regi rolls it back toward the middle. One on three. Takes the big bump from Ruano. Regi chips it for McBride. Caron playing it nicely. Michonne settles and belts it clear to midfield. Pope takes it down on the chest. Stewart. Sané, who has moved forward of Stewart. O'Brien distributing left side, Regi. Has McBride going far post. Goes for the far post. It's too high and too long. This portion of the match brought to you by Budweiser. Claudio Reyna, the most skillful player overall for the United States, shows here his ability to hold the ball, very strong on the ball and just toy with defenders, meanwhile having his head up to pick out the good run by Regi. Keller picking it up after Acevedo's foul against Burhalter, and Casey Keller will take as many steps as he can before the referee Ron Hell forces him to put the ball down. Tony Sané in front of that red-clad crowd in the lower deck. A lot of vocal support for the U.S. O'Brien, 30 yards from goal. His drive comes off a of body. Stewart chipping far post. A lot of traffic, and McBride and Reyna both stumble as they had contact en route to the ball. Frustration on the face of Ernie Stewart. The United States have done quite a good job, especially early in the second half, of getting into positions to cross the ball, crossing opportunities. However, what has been lacking up to this point is enough quality on those crosses. Each and every one of them just a bit too long or not driven hard enough. Regi wins the head ball at midfield, but it comes out for a Guatemala throw. -in. Nothing has gone Bruce Arena's way, despite the U.S. carrying the bulk of the attack. With Costa Rica's win, the U.S. still is in control of its own destiny, but would love a win against Guatemala here today at RFK, then a win against Costa Rica on the 11th of October in Columbus. With those two results, the U.S. would assure itself of advancing to the next round. O'Brien has Karofsky running toward the corner. Karofsky turning it middle. Brings it back for Regi. Regi has three men in the box. McBride moving to the far side, trying to create space for Joe Max Moore, who has two men on him. And the U.S. has to bring it back to the perimeter once again. Eddie Lewis is warming up on the sideline, as is Kobe Jones. There is some forward-moving speed for the U.S. Two guys who can really serve it in there. McBride volleying it back. Karofsky's volley just goes wide. Murderous volley by Jovan Karofsky, and he only missed by a foot and a half. Brian McBride, the player, winning this ball over in the corner of the penalty area. Karofsky leaves his feet on the side volley and drives it just inches wide. 
excellent form, good power on the shot. At the target missed by Karofsky. They're knocking on the door, Ty, and if they keep knocking like this, they're going to knock it down. O'Brien against Acevedo, puts on the speed against Heron, tries the cross, can't draw it back. Rob Stone. Two quick substitutions. Bruce Serena right now talking with Eddie Lewis and Kobe Jones. The sub cards have been filled out. Tony Sane, Jovan Karofsky will be coming out. So Bruce Serena making that offensive move right away. Sane comes off the back line. Both of these players are midfielders moving in. So maybe we'll see Stewart move up even farther, Ty. Well, what you will definitely see is the United States playing with only three at the back and at times just two at the back because Regi is still part of the attack up the left side, even with Eddie Lewis there. O'Brien winning it with help from Moore, jacking it long from McBride. Great speed onto the ball to keep it in bounds here. McBride against Swisher. Reyna has room. The 30-yard effort all the way to the top of the box. Reyna's right inside. What a spectacular dribbling sequence from Claudio Reyna. Reyna playing with tremendous confidence with Glasgow Rangers in Scotland. Scored a goal last week for Rangers in their loss to Glasgow Celtic. Reyna, a player now who is coming to his own and showing it there and trying to vary the attack by instead of playing high balls in, instead of even working combinations, trying to just dribble until he's able to slip a ball to Joe Max Moore or draw a foul. This portion of the match is brought to you by Chevrolet. Regi turns it with the chest. He's had room all day long. Joe Max Moore showing. Top of the box, Regi didn't see it early enough, plays the safe ball to Karofsky. O'Brien with a man right on his back. Acevedo has Pesarosi moving forward. Also Michonne coming up in the attack. Polk takes it away. Polk is getting the best of Pesarosi. Eddie Polk looking very fit. John O'Brien asked Reyna to Sané. If Sané does come out, it'll be the first action he has missed at all in World Cup qualifying. He and Regi have played every minute so far for the U.S. in the year 2000 in qualifying. Funes looking long ball. Sané is there. Pushing forward, Reyna has Stewart on the right wing. Stewart waiting for the ball against Machon. Ernie Stewart. Looking for the cross, chips it. McBride going way up to win it free. Regi has a chance. Half volley, way wild. That's going all the way into the stands. Program reminder, Saturday night on ABC Sports. It's Florida State against Georgia Tech. Some regions of the country will see Colorado against USC. That's Saturday night at 8 Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on ABC Sports. Kobe Jones is into the game, and Sané is out. Stewart is coming out, and Lewis is in. Remember, Ernie Stewart had the yellow card. That's part of the reason he was not left on the field. He still looked pretty effective on that right flank. Eddie Pope tracking it down. He's got Jones on the sideline. Pesarosi gives him a bump. Pope goes down. Bruce Arena openly admitted after reviewing the tape of the first Guatemala game but the substitutions that Cortez, the Guatemalan head coach, made were more effective than the ones he made. That's as close as you're going to hear to a head coach saying, I got out coach. Arena is not one to make the same mistake twice. Moore straight ahead. McBride lays it off for Karofsky. Karofsky heel pass. Moore trying to thread the needle. Does Estrada comes out. Why? Acevedo popping it up for Michonne. O'Brien going up with the elbow. Michonne going down. O'Brien asking him to get up before the ambulance arrives. Well, Martin Machon, a player very familiar to the U.S. squad. Machon playing in Major League Soccer here in the United States for the Miami Fusion. Previously, a couple of seasons with the L.A. Galaxy. Very powerful left foot. He showed that a little bit in the first half of this game, but in the second half, his role has been almost entirely defensive 
as a ball winning midfielder. Funes is having a look at his teammate and there may be some blood drawn here and that would require medical attention and add to some stoppage time at the conclusion of this 45 minute second half. There is a lot at stake in this match. Both of these teams trying to stay alive in World Cup qualifying. An elbow to the face of Martin Machon. Seems to have opened up at least a small cut. We anticipate seeing Machon again as this second half progresses. John O'Brien bringing the left elbow up, cracking Martin Machon over on the right side of his forehead, it appears. There is apparently some blood over Machon's right eye. And you can see he's touching that area. They take him to the far sideline. And Machon immediately appears ready to go again. Kobe Jones getting back, heading it back out of the penalty area. Karofsky turning, firing it right into Benitez. This could, settles. this could be very exciting if the United States is able to widen their attack and use the fresh legs of Eddie Lewis on the left and Kobe Jones on the right. Kobe Jones making his record 133rd international appearance for the United States. Eddie Lewis has Joe Max Moore gives it to him. Not a clean trap. Now settles. The field is very uneven. And even the most skilled players are having a little trouble as the ball takes some odd hops. Reyna has room. Outside of the foot foot too stiff for McBride. It rolls out. Guatemala goal kick. Not the greatest decision or execution by Claudio Reyna there. Joe Max Moore was one on one in the left side of the box tries to squeeze a ball in to Brian McBride. McBride was in heavier traffic and moving the wrong direction for that particular the bend that Reyna put on that ball. Eddie Lewis. Joe Max Moore. In traffic has to lay it off for Lewis. Karofsky immediately turns. Lewis has Jones in the box going far post for McBride at knuckles and Estrada picks it up. Again quality lacking on the accuracy of the crosses even with the new players in Lewis on the left here. Marshawn is back in. That's a Rosie's pop up header. Keller handles it easily and quickly just chest passes it out for O'Brien. This portion of the match is brought to you by Allstate. O'Brien running into trouble. Acevedo winning it on the tackle. Pesarosi a step slow and he gives it away on the pass to Pope. O'Brien's put a lot of work into this game. He appears to be losing either his legs or his focus or both. And that was a concern of Bruce Arena's leading into this game, whether in fact John O'Brien could take on Chris Armis's role and really perform it for 90 minutes. Kobe Jones to Joe Max Moore. Moore into traffic and bangs and pinballs off a couple of bodies. Reyna chips it for Moore. Moore waiting on the ball, settles it beautifully. Heron screens it off and Estrada picks it up. Guatemala would be delighted with a 0-0 result here. The U.S. needs the three points at home to continue its quest toward qualifying for the 2002 World Cup. Moore with pressure has to lay it back for Regi. Karofsky is open square. Regi rolls it forward. He's looking long for Jones. Jones way up for the header. Now McBride races onto it. McBride looking for a target. Turns back to the middle. It's a corner kick for the U.S. Guatemala is requesting a substitution and will get it. Guillermo Ramirez is coming on for Dwight Pesarosi. Pesarosi, as we got into the early minutes of the second half. And now they're saying that they don't want Pesarosi, they want Funes. Now this is or probably right. deliberate delay tactic by the Guatemalans. You just said it, Jack. They'd be very pleased with a 0-0 game. Pesarosi remains in the game, and Funes 
The captain takes off the armband and comes out. Bodies flying in front of the goal. Guillermo Ramirez, 22 years old, replacing 34-year-old Funes. Reynolds corner kick. Looking for McBride, a strut out there in front of Berhalter. He wants a quick counter. Belts it out long. Valencia into the middle. This is Ramirez. His first touch is a shaky one. Kobe Jones, who had dropped to the back line, lays it off for Berhalter. Regi, push pass for Lewis. Lewis trying to move around Benitez. Benitez takes an elbow to the head, and Lewis is going to get a red card. The U.S. will go 10 on 11 for the last 25 minutes plus here. And Lewis will miss the game on October 11th against Costa Rica in Columbus. The elbow by Eddie Lewis clearly in view of the referee, Ron Hell. You'll see Lewis's right elbow snap back under the chin of Benitez. The referee in the background, full view of it. Lewis, knowing Benitez is challenging for this ball, slams the arm in front of him. Perhaps a little bit harsh. It wasn't a full wind up with the elbow, but the fact is he did bring it up. Time before this game, you talked about it. Even people in the U.S. Soccer Federation talked about it, that the United States was going to have to be patient. Eddie Lewis exits here. Now, remember that earlier this summer, no man had played more minutes for that man, Bruce Arena, than Eddie Lewis. But Lewis had the chance to finish a couple opportunities in Costa Rica, didn't have a good game there, seems to have fallen out of favor a little bit as his play has leveled out after basically playing nonstop for two years, and now this extraordinarily frustrating moment for him. He's playing himself right off the national squad. A tough break for Lewis. But he's on the field. He's making the decisions whether, in fact, to throw the arm in the way of the opponent. So he pays the price. So the U.S. needing a win and three points in the standings. Goes 10 on 11 for the rest of the match. This portion of the match brought to you by Motrin. The Guatemalans making an awful lot of noise right now. Feeling good about their chances. There are no guarantees in international soccer. Just ask... Ukraine, who lost to Poland yesterday at home in a World Cup qualifier. Holland almost losing to Ireland. McBride ridden down. Swisher on the foul. Ron Hell glares at Swisher. The card stays in the pocket. The U.S. Partisans. And last, last night, Chile losing to Colombia at home. The pressure does funny things. Bruce Arena said restarts could decide this game. Here is one. The server is Reyna. Far post. Karofsky trying the diving header, but Acevedo getting in the way. Machon for Acevedo. Kobe Jones defending. Plays it forward for Ramirez. Regie belts it out of bounds. Guatemala comes up to midfield for the throw. Jack, what hurts doubly is that substitution is, in fact, wasted. Eddie Lewis coming on with fresh legs. Now, those, that's the guy you lose on the ejection. Kobe Jones for McBride. Moore, Karofsky, a little too far in front. Ruano, who now is wearing the captain's armband with Funes out. Acevedo challenging Burhalter. Burhalter wins it over the top. Hope straight ahead. Bad hop for Reyna. Burhalter for Pope. The U.S. builds it up, going 10, attacking against 11. Eddie Lewis ejected in the 65th minute on the red card, elbowing foul. McBride trying to turn Swisher. O'Brien around the perimeter against Ramirez, plays it back for Regi. Here's Karofsky looking to turn to face the goal. Has to bring it back to the perimeter to Pope. Everybody's in the back 40 yards of the field for Guatemala. Kobe Jones makes the speed move too far out in front. Miranda, the sweeper, takes it away. This portion of the match brought to you by York, Peppermint, Patty. The United States obviously will have to dig deep here. The fact that they are down a man. 
The funny thing, at times, the team with the extra man psychologically eases up ever so slightly, and it could be an opportunity for the United States to break things open and get a goal. Alongside Ty Keown with Rob Stone, I'm Jack Edwards. We're at RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. The U.S. playing 10 on 11 this World Cup qualifier as it has had a man thrown out of the game. Kobe Jones looking far post O'Brien against Ramirez, and Ramirez there first. Regi will track it down easily in midfield. Mario Reyna, square for Perhalter. He can walk it up. Karofsky, shipping for O'Brien, not far enough. Luano for Ramirez. Ramirez behind Pesarosi, who looks pretty tired right now, and Regi stepping away. Pesarosi called for the hold. Coming up next, a reminder, only five races left in the FedEx Championship Series. Points leader Michael Andretti against defending champ Juan Montoya. Indy car racing from Vancouver next on ABC. Joe Max Moore, bad luck off the referee Ron Hell. Heel pass for Pope. Burhal to right side for Jones. Kobe Jones, the veteran, into the middle for Karofsky. The turn and the shot. One hopper, Estrada has it himself. Again, perhaps a little more patience would have worked for the United States. There. There's 30, 20 minutes left in this match. Karofsky from long range there. Karofsky has Jones on the right. Jovan Karofsky. Here's Jones. McBride is an available target. Far post. Jones is cross deflected. Heron pops it up. O'Brien settles. Quick pass for Jones. Jones has an opening. Kobe Jones tries to slide it across the middle. Three men back defensively. Benitez going down in a heap. And Guatemala clears. Martin Machon. Has a man far side. It's Ramirez going long. This one hangs up for Ruano. Heads it down in the middle. Pope bumps him down. Play on. Regi, here's a U.S. counter with four, no make it, five Guatemalans caught up field. Kobe Jones is onside. Jones has more middle. Ships across for McBride. McBride scores! Brian McBride! The building is shaking! started from Reyna out wide to Kobe Jones. He has space to look up. Brian McBride pays the price. A heavy collision with Estrada. But before the collision, McBride got to see the ball carried into the net. And it's sweet relief for the United States here at home in front of over 50,000 fans. The go-ahead goal, McBride from Kobe Jones with the initial pass from Claudio Reyna. Ty, every once in a while in soccer, you see a situation like that in which either a goalkeeper or more often a forward gets his leg broken badly on that kind of collision and McBride has seen it happen he's known it to happen he knew it could happen there but in a national team game you are willing to take amazing sacrifices and here his teammate Kobe Jones is down holding his head after a heavy collision Jack absolutely no Hesitation, zero hesitation by Brian McBride. The minute Kobe Jones looked up, McBride knew he was going to beat Estrada to that ball, no matter what it took. And that's exactly what Jones has put in the game to do, provide that little burst of speed into open space, which Jones has been so great at year after year. Rob Stone, what's going on on the sideline? I know you can't hear yourself. We can't hear you. We're going to try to get it back to you as soon as we clear up our technical difficulties. Let's have another go at it, Rob. Guys, as soon as that ball went in the net, Bruce Serena had a mini celebration. Went right down to the end of the bench, tapped Carlos Simosa. Carlos, get up. He is warming up. He will be coming in the game immediately for Jovan Carras.
Arlovsky. Guatemala already made an offensive substitution, bringing on Freddy Garcia, who's a huge factor on July 16th in Mazatenango, Guatemala. But on this switch, obviously, Carlos Jamosa there to help stabilize, bring an extra defender into play for the United States. The courage of Brian McBride, the speed of Kobe Jones, and don't forget the overall tenacity of this American national team playing 10 against 11 against the team that was clearly delighted to come out with a 0-0 result. It's not over yet. Add to that the vision of Claudio Reyna and the passing ability of Claudio Reyna. Reyna hammered in midfield holding his left knee and this is not good for the U.S. He's still down the shot well wide and Reyna gesturing to the bench. Well, Eddie Luce left the game for elbowing a Guatemalan player, a direct red card. This challenge on Reyna quite late. There's only one player that the U.S. absolutely cannot do without. You're looking at him lying down on the field wearing number 10. He started the play for the goal, getting the ball out to Kobe Jones. That is over oh. the top of the ball. That is a red card infraction. Not called. No call made there. See the player. The, Deliberately, Freddy Garcia coming over the ball. Everaldo Valencia coming directly over the ball to try and put his cleats into Claudio Reyna's knee. That is despicable. The immediate situation is the U.S. is going to be 9 against 11. Unless Arena subs out Reyna immediately. The bigger picture is, as Claudio Reyna is carried off the field, if this guy goes down, this is the hub of the wheel. It is on Claudio Reyna's back that the U.S. hopes for the World Cup. Watch rest. Valencia's right boot go over the top of the ball into the shin area, and his left leg did the most damage to Reyna's right knee. He comes in, it's a scissors, the second leg coming in to take the man and to injure him, with intent to injure him. O'Brien outside of the foot. Flick gets knocked down in midfield. The U.S. 9 against 11. Here's Acevedo. Acevedo taking it down on the chest. Tries to move around. Burhalter takes a dive that any Olympian would be proud of in Sydney. Except Ron Hell gives it a zero. This portion of the match brought to you by Haviland. Valencia, in effect, tried to injure Reyna twice on the same play. First with the extended right foot over the top of the ball and then wrapping his left leg around Reyna's right knee. A flick on ball, Acevedo is offside. Close call there, the United States fortunate. Yamosa is entering the game. He is going to the back line. And Eddie Pope will push across to the far side. So it'll be Burhalter and Yamosa. As I believe the U.S. is going to form the back again here, Ty. That is a substitution for Reyna. So Reyna is out. The U.S. is back to 10 on 11. Here's Joe Max Moore. 25 yards out the blast. Squirts off the side of his foot and shanks out of bounds. I think it's important that Reyna does not take any chances with that right knee and try and finish this game. So he's done for the day. A wise decision overall. Yamosa steps in. What the USA, though, will miss without Claudio Reyna is his ability to hold the ball, dictate the pace of the game, and use up some of this clock as the USA tries to defend the one goal lead the rest of the way. As Guatemala pushes it up here, we may get a glimpse far side at. Claudio Reyna right there the man walking toward the corner along the sideline that is Reyna he's up on his feet so Reyna is on his feet O'Brien knocked down on another Guatemalan foul here or is this going to be ruled a goal kick not a clear indication from the referee Ron Hell from the placement that Casey Keller is using with the ball it is a foul portion of the match is brought to you by Budweiser. Yeah. Keller cranking it up, looking for McBride. Mushon settles. Rob Stone taking away. Burhalter 
Playing it back for Keller. Keller just going out of bounds with it here. The U.S. will get back and try to stay organized on defense. There's Claudio Reyna. It's terrific to see him under his own power. The cross. Pesarosi into the box, and Regi says, let's get this thing out of here. Guatemala, though, will get a restart, a corner kick here, and everybody's going to come up. the corner short post McBride is there Benitez against Joe Max Moore fires far side of the box the volley goes well wide Guatemala still with the extra man still looking to find extra bodies blue shirts at the back post is the USA undermanned overall there's going to be an open player or two perhaps Freddy Garcia has entered the game for Guatemala wearing number 20. Originally we were told that Garcia would be wearing number nine today. The Guatemalans not with names on the jerseys. And there has been some number switching. I wouldn't accuse them of gamesmanship outright but it may just be a little coincidence. Players often look for numbers rather than faces in international play as to whom they're going to mark. Jones with a brilliant move. Cuts it back for McBride. It's now Moore with the second chance. It goes past both of them. McBride and Moore have given so much. Moore sprinting back to get back defensively. Ramirez. Here's Garcia, who is a good offensive player. He's got some moves. Tries to chip it back to the corner for Ramirez. Regi in the way. Regi and Pope have been stalwarts in the U.S. defense. Perhalter also has played well. Pope winning the battle. Yamosa toward the middle of the box. A little bit of tension here in the U.S. defense. O'Brien taking the pressure off to Kobe Jones. Jones belting it across midfield. Just trying to take some pressure off. Ruano settling it down. Here's Miranda. Miranda against Karafsi. Ramirez. Belts it into the box. Burhalter skying it high and wide. Out of danger. The sweat pouring off of Greg Burhalter. Safety first. Just get it out of there. Ruano to take the long throw here. He's only 20 yards from the end line. Into the danger area, but Pesarosi has no spring left. Regi heading it clear. Pesarosi number 14 in blue. Gave an awful lot in the first half of this game. Ruano on another long throw. The U.S. defenders tumbling over one another. Ruano, Regi trying to run down Pesarosi. Pesarosi tries to cut it back. Burhalter with a nice block to knock it out. Regi is down, and he is hurt. Regi struggling to get back on his feet. Asks for a hand up and gets it from Ulysses Rangel, the Mexican referee. The U.S. playing 10 on 11 with Eddie Lewis ejected. Romano's throw in. McBride again heads it out of the defensive end. Brian McBride not only risking a broken leg on the goal, but doing it at least half a dozen times in the defensive penalty area. Kobe Jones a good two feet off the ground on the header. Freddy Garcia heading top of the box. Pesarosi, Keller controls. Keller cranks a 75-yarder. This will be a game of catch with Everaldo Estrada. You hear the chants from the U.S. fans at RFK Stadium, more than 50,000 on hand. On a steamy late summer afternoon in World Cup qualifying. Burhalter against Pesarosi. Pesarosi winning at middle. Burhalter takes it off the Yamosa challenge. Joe Max Moore trying to settle. Too far for Karofsky. This portion of the match is brought to you by Tropicana. Freddy Garcia to Miranda Regi. Belts it clear. Getting into the final minutes here with the U.S. down a man, a more defensive posture from the Americans. But they're only up by a goal. 
it squirts all the way through with a lot of hard stop at RFK. Keller controls it. It's exceedingly difficult being a man down and trying to keep possession, but that's what the United States must do. They must be able to get their foot on the ball and knock it around a little bit. Eddie Pope pops it up, now settles perfectly. Jones has a ton of space, and he's got fresh legs. McBride is still in the game and still looking for a target pass. Jones with a great move into the box. Kobe Jones, oh, he couldn't find the face of the goal. It will not be for lack of effort that Kobe Jones doesn't pull one in today. And look at him trying to get up, and he's hurt. Took a shot in the chest. Acevedo at the other end looking for an opportunity. Jones laboring to get back. I don't know if he had the wind knocked out of him or if he just got hit in the stomach. But here's Freddy Garcia with room. Garcia looking for Pesarosi. A shot right on him to save Keller. There's Jones who's really paying the price. A terrific dribbling move by Kobe Jones in the right corner, splitting two Guatemalan defenders. Be a little selfish trying the left footed shot with Brian McBride in the center, who had drawn away from his mark. Marchand. Straight ahead, Burhalter anticipating, moving around Pesarosi. Pesarosi pulls him down. That's a fatigue foul, and credit to Burhalter for being more fit at this stage of the match. Let's take a look at the All State save of the match. We'll go back to the first half of play. Audio Reyna dribbling deep in the Guatemala penalty. A nice cutback, and he hammers a shot, but Edgar Estrada with the All State save of the day. Reggie settling in midfield, plays it straight up for McBride. McBride has Jones on the far side, now sees him, he's got some space. Jones in the seam, bringing it back, volleying it toward McBride, it's over his head, and rolls out. McBride's tank pretty close to empty there. Ty, you played for the national team. You have been in late stages of matches like this, and when the tank is empty, there is something beneath it all called pride that keeps you going. Wearing the colors makes a difference, there's no question. Bright showed us that on the goal, but can the U.S. hold on here for three points at home? Benitez having to play it around the perimeter. Ramirez working against Joe Max Moore, who has not stopped moving all day long. Miranda, the sweeper, up on the attack, looking for Pesarosi. Two men on the ball, it comes across, Benitez save, Keller! Best chance of the day, no question for Guatemala. Keller with some serious hang time. Heron, McBride bumps him, play on. McBride against Ruano, and McBride can barely take two running steps in a row at this juncture. Ashon looking for another chance. Yamosa, a shaky volley, playing it square. Regis still chugging along. Up the sideline over Joe Max Moore. A moment ago, Benitez missed firing on a shot he should have put away. Keller, though, to his credit, did not commit. Foul against Karaski, 35 yards from goal. Remember, the U.S. was in this very position up 1 0 against Guatemala in the very closing moments, and Guatemala tied them up. We're now in the 88th minute. Fouls 14 apiece. Bruce Arena drilled his team on restarts. The U.S. has been a little shaky on restarts for most of this afternoon. This could be the last best chance for Guatemala to come out of here with a point. And Michonne is over the ball. Freddy Garcia also there wearing number 20. Garcia's shot off the wall was McBride going up. Corner kick for Guatemala. Chevrolet's man of the match is Brian McBride. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the U.S. Soccer Foundation in McBride's name. Beyond any individual honor, the men in white here trying to close out a 1-0 win. Yamosa, a pop-up header. Garcia toward the middle, Benitez keeps it moving for Pesarosi. Pesarosi trying to turn on Pope. They both go down. It's out of bounds, a Guatemala throw in, and Pope is slow to get up. Pope is still not up. 
It's a U.S. throw ruled off Guatemala and all kinds of debris being heaved out of the upper deck. A water bottle missing. The referee's assistant on the line by no more than six feet. Eddie Pope has consistently beaten Pesarosi to every 50-50 ball. It's made a difference for the United States at the back. More importantly, Eddie Pope appears to be finishing out 90 minutes. You go back to Mazatenango, Guatemala on July 16th. In the 70th minute, he had to leave the game with a knee problem, and that was part of the downfall of the United States, having to use a substitution there for a player at the back. World Cup qualifying is hard. People like to paint it in various ways, but the U.S. is not yet a sophisticated enough soccer nation, not successful enough to have style points. Any win at home is a good win. Any point on the road is a good point. The U.S. in the final throws here, trying to close out Guatemala. Mashon disrupted by O'Brien. O'Brien with Karofsky. Can't connect with McBride. Obvious, again, the United States playing a man down. There's just fewer options to try and keep the ball. At the official's discretion, there is two minutes of stoppage time added to the second half. Two minutes for Guatemala to try to win back a couple of points here from the U.S. Get a tie. O'Brien blocks it out of bounds off Benitez. Benitez takes the throw. Pesarosi tries an awkward volley, and it goes over the top. Pesarosi, an excellent effort for Guatemala today. He has given his all. We are in stoppage time. Casey Keller, the U.S. taking its time here in stoppage time. Ron Hell urging the American goalkeeper to keep it going. If the U.S. wins here, and if it should beat Costa Rica in Columbus on the 11th of October, the U.S. would clinch advancement to the next round. Guatemala still pressing the attack. Ruano trying the through ball. Jones is back, and Hope takes it away. Perón. Garcia chipping into the box. Burhalter against Pesarosi. It goes out of bounds. Pesarosi will sleep well tonight. Good decision by Casey Keller there to stay on his line. That ball ended up going well out of danger, well out of the reach of Dwight Pesarosi. A moment ago, Eddie Pope, I thought a poor decision. McBride wanted a ball long into the corner where there was more space and a chance to kill more time off the clock. Clock and Pope played it short. McBride to Karofsky tries the long blast. It is wide. Just a few seconds remain. It was in the last seconds that Bruce Arena's guys gave up the tying goal to Guatemala in Mazatenango in July. This would be sweet payback if they could hang on here. The Guatemalans will not go down without one last effort. Valencia, Ramirez with Joe Max Moore in his face. Ramirez will take the free kick, a foul ruled against Moore. O'Brien up for the header in the stoppage time. This game is over. The United States has three points at home. as the U.S. gets into position to advance. Costa Rica in first place with a 3-0 win over Barbados. Today, the U.S. in second place now with seven points on two wins and a tie with one loss. The U.S. plays Costa Rica on the 11th of October in Columbus. We will be back to RFK Stadium in our nation's capital to wrap this one up. The U.S. with a 1-0 win in World Cup qualifying over Guatemala. Stay with us. Strawberry with calcium. 100% juice, calcium for strong bones. New orange strawberry could be the healthiest 9.3 seconds of a kid's morning. Why are there so many Hershey's Kisses in every bag? Because they go really fast. 
Little Hershey's Kisses, big chocolate taste. Hello? Where's that? Yo, who's that? Yo, it's D. True. Hello? Where's that? True. You worry about your car lasting? Imagine going 500 miles in one stretch and 200 miles an hour. That gives out the life right out.